Steven Luther, Biohacker, Brooklyn Branch, New Human. Welcome. Round two. Round two. How are you feeling? Good. Good to be back. Obviously mean, meant that the uh, first episode, episode went well. Yeah, it did. So, yeah, it's good to be back. We're progressing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming in. No, thank you for having me. This is this is awesome. Love chatting mm. about all the things that we do. And yeah, looking forward to this conversation. Definitely. You want to get us going? Yeah. I've heard there's a there's something you want to talk about. Yeah, so obviously um, in relation to our um, first episode, a lot of people have been asking, you know, they want a bit more tips, you know, the ways that they can optimize their life, and, you know, things they can implement. And because, you know, they've watched one of your recent interviews with uh, Kevin Howell. Oh, yeah, the Take, take a Seat TV. Yeah, yeah Take a Seat TV, mm. where you mentioned a few of your life hacks. Shout out to Kevin, though. He's a great entrepreneur. Yeah, it's a fantastic interview. I loved it. Yeah. Um, so I thought we could maybe dabble a bit in that. I think it'll be good 12 years. Um, and yeah, I think everyone wants to know what the uh, founder of New Human would like uh, to share with us. So get your notepads ready and write down. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> get your fans. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge proponent of um, life hacks, uh, getting into specific routines that enhance and optimize cognitive function, brain function, um, you know, training to be happy, training to be successful every day. I think that's fundamental. You've you got to be better than the day before. Better people build a better world. And that's really what it's all about. I don't think enough people focus on doing what the manual says. Um, because the manual says a lot. But a lot of people, for example, like meditation, a lot of people, oh, meditation, okay, one day, maybe I'll give it a try. You should be doing that every day. Right. You should be focused on optimizing your mind every day right you know like it's, it's one thing to hear one person doing it but the fact that you know if we look at you know such cool research and you know books coming out about you know people tracking the lives of all these massively successful people in their various fields you know th th there's this one thing that keeps on coming up they all have a meditative practice yeah in in their day-to-day -day. and that knowing that convinced me to do it every day yeah. or start implementing my day-to-day -day life. And I think, you know, knowing that, you know, um, it's not just one person does it, but they all do it. Um, you know, I think at Tim Ferriss' book, all the people that he interviewed, 80% um, of them have a morning meditative practice. Yeah. Um, or, or yoga session or whatever it may be. To, that's how they start the day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. When I talk to people about meditation... God, I don't have time for meditation. That's like that's the sort of go to. Right. And what I found, and and this is for the for the for the listeners out there. You have time for one deep breath. Right. So I love this meditation. We'll call it the power of the gone. You think of the one thing in your life that you want out of your life, that you want gone. You take a deep breath. And you blow it out of your lungs. And that's the beginning of your meditation. Just one deep breath per day. And you'll find that soon one breath will become two. Two will become three. Three will become four. And soon you will enjoy your meditative state more and more every day. And get better at it. Yeah. It's it's kind of like that... Uh, a two-minute rule when it comes to um, learning a habit uh, from James Clear. Uh, he's the author of, um, I forget the title of the book, but you know, he's, his research is pretty much dedicated to habits and how they form and how you can optimize your life um, in order to install habits into your life. And he often talks about the two-minute rule and so forth. So what you say there with the one breath is, okay, you can start by maybe meditating or starting by a minute or two but the whole idea is, is not to go to your limit just yet yes go just start with one breath and you'll feel accomplished and you know that will have positive psychological benefit and then you know work up from there it's the whole idea is of completing it and getting the gratification from completing it and then yes. you're more likely to carry on yeah i mean that gratitude fundamental part of the process yeah just, like with, com just completing it. Yeah, it's like with, uh, with we see with the clients in our clinics. You know, they all talk about 
you know, when they used to do diets and so forth, they used to be on a certain, you know, lifestyle where they didn't eat well and so forth. And all of a sudden they just want to go on a strict caloric diet. And, you know, that lasts only for like a few days and they're back to what they were doing. Yeah. So the whole idea is you don't want to jump into something too quickly because it's not going to sustain. Yeah. You know, you want to start small and build up. And there's a reason for that because, you know, you'll get that gratification of completing those small tasks. Like there's a, a lot of little things, there's, you know, completing a lot of a lot of little things in your life will lead to, you know, a massive overall change in, 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 your, in your life, so Definitely. to speak, a net value. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think, yeah, that's what you're obviously getting about there is taking it, just taking that one breath you know, when it yeah. comes to meditative practice. And I mean, so. uh, yeah, otherwise you, you end up pivoting. You go all in. It's not for you because you can't really complete the process. So you pivot to the next thing and then you pivot to the next thing. A lot of companies do that. You know, they can't succeed at something and they just pivot to the next thing, pivot to the next thing instead of finding a way to complete the task effectively and then gaining from that. Right. All right. So some, similar in life, you know, same with diets, you know, people pivoting from, oh, I'm going to try this diet and then I'm going to try this and, you know, I'm going f from different diets and really at the end of the day, you're just, you're not really focused on that intracellular nutrient uptake that you should be focused on, you know, for example. Right. Yeah. So my mornings, um, so my mornings start off with an alarm that is not my cell phone. Um, my cell phone's on the kitchen table. Right. Obviously, there are multiple reasons for that. But the one I'm going to discuss uh, with you now is I want to be proactive in the morning. And if my phone is my alarm, I generally pick it up. I look at my WhatsApps or I read my emails and then I'm reactive. I'm reacting to what I'm, I've read. So I don't want to be reactive. I don't want to be in the back foot. I want to be on the front foot. Right. So I'm, I, I try to be proactive in the morning. Um so my alarm is, it's actually a new alarm. It was an old one with a touch top. You could just switch the alarm off. I snooze, which was great. <laughs> and now I have this this one that was gifted to me, a uh, stunning woman. Uh, shout out to her, uh, Miriam Kasim, awesome human being, very successful person, her and her husband, great people. But she bought me this alarm because she knew I was doing this. And it's got like an ambient light. You hit the button a special light comes on you just wake up in a better space <laughs> i love it but once again it's on my cell phone so i'm very proactive right. um i then proceed to hang my legs off the side of the bed and i do my two minute meditation and that really is about visualizing my future health my future self and my future wealth it's a very i've gotten better at it i'm able to see the picture clearly smell it taste it touch it i'm really involved just for two minutes of on what my future is and it's crystal clear right because if it is blurry or fuzzy you don't know whether you're succeeding or failing yeah and i think people intentionally keep their goals you know fuzzy so to speak because you know they, they they're, they're afraid of failure yeah um and you know they don't want to know when they're failing and so forth so they just want to Keep it, keep it that way. Keep it that way. That's yeah. obviously not optimal. Keep it, keep it in the gray area. Yeah, keep mm. it in the gray area. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, and then um, from there, I, I do um, something that Kevin wasn't happy about, <laughs> which is that cold shower, um, getting that vagal tone up, um, getting that cold shower, and um, stimulating that vagus nerve, um, reducing inflammation, any kind of anxiety or depression that's in there, just really helping me to deal with whatever stress I have in my body um, by raising that vagal tone. Um, yeah, cold therapy is amazing. It's amazing. I mean, yeah, there's so much research on cold therapy, also heat therapy, mm. um, you know, um, so yeah, massive benefits there. But also tell people something that they don't realize when it comes to, you know, like cold therapy and so forth. And it's more to do with the fact that, you know, like you kind of progress with your cold therapy. So you start with the cold shower, mm. or not so cold, and you get colder and colder, and eventually maybe take a, like a bath, a cold bath, and then an ice bath, and so and you kind of progress. Yes. And re a reason for that is obviously more benefits to your health, but also, again, the more you can sustain there, in there, the more you can sustain out in life. Yes. You kind of build your resilience. I love that, yeah. You know? Like, you kind of, you, you 
heightened your pain threshold. Yeah. So you can kind of deal a bit more without out there in the world. Similar thing happens in exercise. Similar thing happens in exercise. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So you're you're enduring that that pain therapy, you know, um, and it works well. Because yeah. there are days where I don't want to get in there. Mm. It's winter. I'm cold. But when I'm done with it, I'm pre- I'm prepared. I've like put on the the armor for the day, and I'm ready to go. And I feel great. And I promise you, you won't need your morning caffeine. Yeah. So score there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, nothing gets you wired and awake like like a good cold shower. Definitely. See, I've been doing that myself. I'm still in the cold shower stage. I haven't moved to the ice stage, which a lot of people seem to be on. Um, you know, uh, people in, that are you know. And I think Tim Ferriss mentioned in his book. Mm. A lot of the icons, you know, they're like taking these cold baths. The Ice Man, yeah, yeah. And, mm. you know, Wim Hof and all yeah, those Wim fellas. Hof, yeah. Like, like, whoa, okay, that's crazy. But uh, yeah, you progress and you try to improve, and yeah, yeah, you eventually got, you, get there. Yeah, you got to start somewhere. I mean, even starting with a warm shower and then making it cold before you get out. You know, you got to try different things. You know, just yeah. start the process, right? But um, yeah, from from there, I'm yeah, from there, I'm really I'm into my kitchen and um. I'm, I'm taking the minerals my body requires. I don't think people put enough emphasis on minerals. It's always vitamins, but minerals. Minerals and amino acids. Yeah. Essential. Isn't that Linus Pauling that said all ailments of the body can be traced down to an imbalance of minerals? Yeah. I think he was one of the, I mean, Dr. Linus Pauling. Dr. Yeah. Linus Pauling, he was, yeah. He was big. Um, yeah. Also with L-proline, L-lysine, vitamin C, for cholesterol and heart disease problems and those kind of things. He was very big. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to that man. Great man. Wrote really good book. Won, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. He did. He won the Peace, no, Peace Prize. Um, uh, he won a Nobel he Prize. He won a Nobel Prize. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I'm, I'm easily familiar there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, quite interesting that I came across a quote of him the other day. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, there's there's not enough emphasis on, on minerals in the world today, which is sad because they are the spark plugs to life. I mean, they are. Without them... Right. Th- things are going wrong and it's and once again we're back on the mineral analysis because it's so good at looking intracellularly at what's happening and oxidation and uptake of nutrient because we're, we're really focused on that making sure that your body is actually getting the nutrient it deserves it doesn't matter what's on the plate right to some degree what matters is that is that nutrient being taken up correctly right protein synthesis glucose metabolism yeah. all of those things you know so yeah, uh, minerals go in. Um, what are some things you take? Ah, yeah. So my throughout the day it changes, but in the morning, um, definitely big on the cellular upgrade, um, which is the phospholipids. Oh, phospholipid product. Yeah, phospholipids essential. Right. I mean, you need to have a healthy cell for things to work to trickle up. Health is health is starts in the cell oh, of course, yeah. so a healthy cell phospholipids phospholipids dicolon, there's a whole host I think ours has got like seven of them in yeah they got a lot in there they got yeah. a lot in there Sam I'm also I take cervic phospholipids every morning yeah crucial for me crucial um, and, and yeah and, I, and I'm hard on the stress response because the magnesium I mean that's my favorite mineral slash health supplement oh, I'm so, tell us yeah. about it yeah magnesium there's, there's nothing in my opinion that can have such a a massive overall benef- beneficial effect on your health than what magnesium can. And a lot of people do take magnesium, but they don't take enough. I think the RDA here in South Africa is something like 400 milligrams a day. Yeah. That's actually quite high, yeah. considering it's a government RDA, and those values are quite low. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, and a lot of people are taking, you know, certain supplements, and I'm like, you're just not getting enough. No. I am easily taking two to three thousand milligrams of magnesium a day yeah likewise yeah, yeah. big numbers and i take different forms as well yeah yeah so there are different forms let's cover that what yeah. what in your opinion is the right form right so i mean yeah the different forms catch different parts of the body right so magnesium theorates you know that's one that's been getting a lot of traction lately it's more um, beneficial to brain health yeah um you know, glycinate is one that I take a lot, you know, especially focus a lot there on the gut health and so forth. Mm. I take uh, magnesium chelate um, as well. That's more for like um, muscle type uh, yeah. uh, 
issues and so forth if my muscle spasms so muscle forth spasm, magnesium yeah. chelates fantastic mm. and then I actually take a topical magnesium as well magnesium chloride nice. comes in a spray form I, uh, I spray a bit uh, every day um, before bed because um, right now I'm actually dealing with a bit of slight of a shoulder injury so I spray a bit on at night absorbs instantly I was actually showing one of, the, one of my clients one of the clients said uh, at our facility mm. just how ma- amazing this product is I um I tested her range of motion, how far she could, uh, you know, extend her arm back, mm. and she, you know, obviously got to a certain range, and then I applied magnesium chloride topically, and instantly we did the test again, and the range of motion was instantly better. So it works. Unbelievable. Yeah, and I mm. even spoke to Dr. Son Lehman about that. Yeah. And yeah, she was like, yeah, she's a massive favor of it, and it's an amazing product. Um, yeah. magnesium chloride yeah topical yeah, yeah I, th- I think it's it's incredible i mean yeah, people underestimate the value of magnesium in the body specifically when dealing with stress or living that high stress lifestyle yeah. big businessman running a big facility right you need to manage your stress the effects epigenetically right on your on on your genes are incredible we know stress causes inflammation inflammation causes disease 90 percent right. of disease starts in the mind and manifest in the body so definitely a good thing to have in there to to manage your stress for sure no magnesium is i mean honestly that's um, we know from the hma analysis that's the first thing that and zinc mm. are the first minerals you lose and then when that happens everything else goes out of sync calcium mm. and so forth mm. Mm. um and you know like we said you know we, there's a reason why we look at minerals that the spark plugs of life there's mm. millions of reactions happening in the body every second yeah. All of them, you know, minerals involved in some way, shape, or form. Mm. So yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I've, got my, I've also got my amino acids that I take, which are relative to to my body. We've done the blood spot, uh, which Newman the, offers. Oh, the amino acid blood yeah, spot. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So the so I take the the required aminos, and then and we actually build you a personal, yeah, a personalized amino acid combination. So taking that and and then yeah, big one for me, uh, selenium. Um, selenium yeah I love I love selenium I, I love its effect on free radicals in the body and just reducing inflammation I'm a huge proponent of a, a long life is a life without inflammation so everything in your life should be about reducing inflammation and that would be internal and of course in, in your environment epigenetically you need to make sure that you're living a peaceful life and strive towards peace peace of mind you know peace of body because that will make you you're going to live longer that's like a that's like a life, long term life hack, mm. and marry the right woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like it definitely decrease that, inflammation. <laughs> that's gonna decrease a large amount of inflammation. <laughs> marry the right woman. Yeah. It, was a, it was an old man that told me that on his deathbed. Believe it or not, very successful, and he gave me that tip. He said. I asked right. him, what do I do? I want to be successful. He said, son, marry the right woman. Right. <laughs> Best that advice w- ever. <laughs> <laughs> Was be- and I did, so. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I think from there, I, I you know, I go, in, I go into work and uh, one of my, you know, being the founder of New Human, I, I, it's my responsibility to keep the teams motivated and make sure that everybody's performing and happy and understands what our vision is in the company. I reiterate our vision weekly. I reiterate... Um, the message of Newman to the world, you know, weekly. Um, I make sure people understand that success is not an end product. We need to all live successfully every day, and that requires optimization of mind and body uh, every day. Um, you know, I, I think a, a, there's very few people that know how good the human body should feel. Um, yeah. There's very few people that know how good the human body should feel. And, you know, I think you can attest to this once you started optimizing your life in terms of supplementation, you know, whatever it may be. We could talk a bit about gratitude. That'd be a good topic as well. Yeah. Massive, um, you know, attraction there. Um, in meditation, you know, you realize actually, wow, you know, like I've actually been living such a subpar life. Um, Absolutely. And, you know, yeah, there's very few people that know how good the human body should feel. People adapt to the way they feel. So they're not sure of what a better life feels like they don't know what it means to feel energized in your mind like that they've never experienced it so they don't know the minute you introduce them you know to neuroplasticity and 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 mind optimization along training and a whole host of things 
all of a sudden their lives go from here to here. It's like, hey, wow, wow, I've been, the colors are brighter, the food tastes better, life is amazing, what a great gift. They're in this new way of thinking. Right. And all of a sudden things just start happening. Mm. No, it's, it's... Yeah, it's incredible. Um, so there's a lot of that. I do a lot of lectures on that in house. And then I, I, I come home to my most favorite part of my day. What would that be? <laughs> <laughs> the jaw. The jaw of awesome. Okay. Yeah, I love that. I took, the jaw of awesome. I, yeah, I read that in Tool of Titans. And I can tell you now, I've been using it for a long time and it, it works. And right. it works same well. Here, same yeah, Yeah. So we're obviously segueing into a bit of gratitude. Yeah. Right. So, so how, yeah. How does that work? Explain to us. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I've got a jar on the kitchen table. My wife hates it because it's got glitter on the side. <laughs> <laughs> it says awesome on it. <laughs> but, yeah, it's got a, I've got a sticky book on the side of it. So I take a piece off and... I just write on there one, one awesome thing that happened in that day. It doesn't matter what it is. Just one awesome thing. And I stuff it in the jar. Right now, right. my jar's full, which is amazing. And my wife's like, get a bigger jar. And I'm like, no, I want to push more awesome into my jar of awesomeness <laughs> <laughs> so that it's overflowing. But the incredible thing is every day I see it. I look at it. Yeah. Every day I walk past yeah. it, I see it. I, mm. I have instant gratitude for the incredible things in my life. Yeah. It's, I love that. It's crazy how it works. Yeah. Put it in a place where you can see it often. Yeah. So whenever, like you, like you said, you walk in, like it wasn't a good day and you just see that job awesome. And it just kind of that gratitude, you know, just kind of combats that. It does. You know, whatever you might be feeling. And yeah. It's like a 180 turnaround. I'm just like, come home. I'm tired. I'm, you know, rough day. And I see the jar. I'm like, yes. That's such an awesome life. My life is great. That. I love this. What a gift. I mean, that atoms have come together to ponder their own origin is an incredible thing. Right. Life is amazing. Yeah. So I just, yeah, so I have that and I spend some time there. I have a nice dinner with a wife and then we don't talk business all right. at home at all. It's like, a, it's a rule. Right. We just don't go there. So, you know, we do other things and we even play chess quite often. That's very important, right? Yeah. What you said there, I think, you know, people struggle to separate different avenues of their life, you know. Um, like, for instance, I always tell people don't, like a lot of people seem to work in the same environment that they sleep. Like there's a there's a you know a desk with their laptop on next to their bed. And, you know, you're just not going to get optimal sleep. I mean, I, I briefly spoke to a few um, clients the other day about optimizing sleep. And, you know, if... I always tell them, you know, if you can't fall asleep while lying in bed, get out of bed. And, you know, you know, if, if you're overthinking and so forth, go, get out of your bedroom and then go and do what you need to do and then come back in. Because that's where you sleep and that's what you sleep on. You're not there to be overthink or yeah. to be on your phone or to do work. Your bedroom is for sleep and that's it. I like that. Yeah, and um, you want, you'll be surprised how much of an effect that has, you know, this this kind of subconscious programming that's going on, you know, if you're working in the same area that you're sleeping in you know you'll constantly be you know when you walk into that room there'll be that you know okay i need to work or you know you'll have that you know kind of mind state going into yeah. that area of your house yeah. and um yeah it can have a massive effect once you start you know separating yeah you, know, you know i like that um i think that's important um, you, you need to have the right energy in the right places right. in your life you know? right um when I'm when I feel like the energy's down, and I'm not in a good space, I, I do the stargazing. I love that. Where I go outside, um, I f you you tend to feel disconnected when you when you've had a rough day. What's it all about? Is the question that always pops in my mind. What's it all about? You know, yeah. Why am life? I doing why, this? Why am I doing this? Yeah. What, you know, what's the bigger picture? And I know already then what mindset I'm in. So now I'm going to work on it. So what I do is I, I sit down on the edge of my garden outside and I try to see myself sitting there. And then I zoom out and I, I go back and I see the clouds passing by and I see myself disappear. I then go further out and I see the moon come past and I go further out and I see the stars come past and 
And I just stop and I look around and I, I see the universe in all its glory. And I instantly feel connected to everything. Right. And then I go back down through the clouds, back bars, you know, to myself and see myself and I enter my own body again. And every time I do that, I feel a massive sense of connection to everything. And I find that when you do that, that sense of like, I'm alone, what's it all about, questioning life goes away. Right. It works very well for me. And I do that every night. I close off mm. so that I connect to the universe. And then... Uh, yeah, it kind of also just puts things into perspective, you know. Mm. You, you know, me and my worries, and you know, they're kind of just, you know... They're so small and... Yeah, they're small. Insignificant. And, and you know, yeah. why am I letting it, you know, completely... Comple- yeah, rule hijack- my life. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, sometimes mm. putting things in perspective is good. And I think that's a good tool that you could mm. use, like, yeah, utilize to, to achieve that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and then from there, you know, back in the bed and... and um, I, I know there's some people that do something to help them sleep. I think you do that. Yeah. Well, what, what, what I do is I, I'll play a little uh, Candy Crush or Tetris. Tell us about it. So, yeah, a lot of people lie in bed. And then this used to happen to me a lot. Um, I would lie in bed and I'd start to overthink. I'd start to... So many my thoughts racing through my mind... Before I know it, you know, I'm two hours there laying in my bed. I'm not asleep. I'm just completely overthinking, overthinking. And then I came across, you know, a a study that showed that, you know, um, playing Tetris or Candy Crush can kind of override the visual processing part of the brain. And they did the study on PTSD patients. Mm. Um, When they play Tetris or, or any game of that sort, it overrode overrode that part of the brain um, and uh, the visual processing center and it kind of hijacked it and then when that happens you don't have the capability to you know visualize all these things that are bringing these post-traumatic mm, that you know, anxiety or that anxiety or whatever, yeah, yeah you know the brain can't think of those things and it's same with me like you know when I was overthinking I, I didn't have the capability to think about those things yeah. because your Tetris <laughs> Tetris took took over that part of the brain brilliant and yeah. you only need to play like 10 minutes mm-hmm. and then the effect can last for 30 to 6 hours that's amazing yeah play it for 10 minutes I promise your sleep will be optimized um, yeah yeah I mean that was that's honestly a fantastic so you've used this for, for quite a while yeah Okay. Play, play a little Tetris on my phone before I go to bed. Okay. With my blue light filter yeah, on. Yeah, blue light filter. I was, yeah, was going to ask. Yeah. Okay. Blue light exposure before bed is not good. They'll keep you awake. Even yeah. if you fall asleep, your melatonin production will be suppressed for at least two to three hours. Yeah. It's not optimal for sleep. For sure. So, yeah, blue light filter. That's a big thing. Blue light is obviously signaling to the brain it's time to be awake, and we don't want that. Yeah, absolutely. Right before we go to bed. Absolutely. And, yeah, and big companies like Apple and... Um, you know android devices they realized this the science behind this and they started implementing blue light filters a lot of people don't even know they're so surprised when i show them there's a blue light filter on, on their, their phone. phone yeah it's installed yeah. yeah so amazing yeah quite interesting yeah yeah so i yeah i mean you know i'm a i'm a huge proponent of living successfully every day that success isn't sort of an end product which which definitely does not come with a component of happiness you know, it's a daily thing. You live successfully every day. You don't become successful. Um, and the same with happiness. And I like to make use of the reticular activating system a lot, like the RAS system, specifically with why I love visualization so much. I'm a visual person. So when I see where I want to go, and I find that my filtering, filtering system, the reticular activating system, is really washing away all the junk around me. You know, and the more I focus on the end product, the more it filters out all the other stuff. Um, yeah, and it makes you see the things that align with that goal or that end product. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah. it shows me why I will achieve the vision. Right. It's like the person at work when they they'll they'll find out very soon why they're the reticular activating system will show them why they're not good at their job if they believe they're not good at their job. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, and that's why I tell even my staff every day, you know, people make mistakes. 
Like, but see the positive in the mistake. You know, the minute you start thinking you're bad at your work, your brain's going to show you why, and that's going to make you worse. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, so the RAS is actually, yeah, it's part of the brain. It's a bundle of nerves, you know, around the brainstem area. And then, yeah, it's, you know, like you said, it's responsible for filtering out mm. certain things. And, you know, you can kind of manipulate it or hack it, you know. Yeah. By, you know, like you said, focusing on a few things. And what you can actually do is, is like, on you can constantly remind yourself about maybe that week's goal or whatever that you want by, like, creating a wallpaper on your phone. So you're constantly reminded by this goal the whole time. I like that. Yeah. So like if I have like a big thing coming up this week, if I have to give like a, you know, a talk, what have you, maybe I would, you know, put something relative to that on my screen server and I'll constantly be reminded by it. And I'll constantly program the brain and it's constantly going to show me ways mm. that can help me in that process. I love that. And um, yeah, it works. I mean, a lot I, of science on the RA. Yeah. I mean, people, people, you know, I tell people about the reprogramming the subconscious and they laugh. They're like, what? That's the hardware. You don't reprogram the hardware because the hardware is there to keep the heart beating, to keep the lungs breathing. You know, you, that just doesn't get reprogrammed. It's the conscious side. I'm like, no, no. What a lot of people don't realize, um, and I think Joe Dispenza, like, he was big uh, with, he still is, I think, with the subconscious reprogramming. And if you understand the brain waves, um, you know, alpha, de delta, beta, theta. Yeah, that's what tie in nicely with your morning routine. Right, right. Yeah. right. So, so, yeah, yeah. so in the morning, yeah, when you wake up, mm -hmm. yeah. you're in theta. The theta. Yeah. So the quicker you get into your meditation in theta, we know that young kids, you know, growing up between the age of, you know, up, up to the age of seven or so, um, they're in theta most of the time. The brain's like a sponge. It's sucking information. It's developing the hardware. When you're in theta. When you're in theta. Right. It's developing the hardware. Right. So when you wake up in the morning, early, first thing, you're, 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 you're in theta, you know? So, yeah, you better get reprogrammed when you're working <laughs> yeah. on what you need to do in that Program time. then. Yes. It's yeah. a good time to, to reprogram the right. hardware. Right. You know? And people think, and I've seen this, people think, you know, that if you live a life of positivity, there's something, it's fake. Cause, you know what I mean? It just shows you there's something seriously wrong in society. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's the case. And a lot of a lot of people are, are shocked by the fact that I'm so positive about everything because I've trained myself to be that way. I've ridden the hardware. People say something negative to me, and I'm like, I don't. What do you? I don't get it. So, a funny story. Um, um, me and uh, shout out to uh, Vanessa. Oh yeah, uh, Vanessa May over at Newman Brooklyn. <laughs> She's reading a book by Jay Shetty. It's called uh, Living Like a Monk, I, th I believe. Yeah. Sorry if I butchered the title there. But yeah, Jay Shetty, amazing. And she's reading the book and she's like, okay, here, here's two different people. This is the person that's, you know, negative and seeing negative, you know, the viewpoint of life and so forth. And here's the positive. Here's like the exact opposite. You know, you either, I think the one, the, the one side was called being in the, the monkey brain or so forth. And mm. the other side was being the monk brain. Okay. And she's like, I'm definitely monkey and Brandon is definitely monk. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, Brandon's definitely a monk. Like the way he views and, you know, all those mm. um, examples underneath the, the, the side that you want to be on, you just tick. And it's true. I went through them like, yeah, Brandon ticks all of them, you know. Awesome. And I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, you. like we actually spoke and made a bit of a job. Like she was like kind of annoyed by it, you know. It's like, <laughs> Brandon's such a monk. Yeah. Um, and I'm such a monkey or something like that. <laughs> it was hilarious. That. Yeah. yeah. That's really sweet. Thank you. Thanks for this. Uh, yeah. I um, I have this friend that phones me and he always, he phones me. He goes, hi, B. How's it going? I say, La it's amazing. Life is incredible. He's like to hold with you and puts the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So It's amazing how people are, you know, yeah. sometimes. And it's not that you're optimistically naive. No. I mean, there is positive in your life. Yeah. Just I mean, focus on that, you know. I mean, like, yeah. you know, like, because it's there, you know? Absolutely. So, I mean, and, and it's there because I want it to be there. Exactly. It's there because I see it every day. day. I, I live that way. Right. You know, people, people, they get told, well done at work, and then they feel positive for a moment or motivated for a moment. I, I don't look at life that way. For me, it's, I live positively every day. I try to see greatness in all things, you know, um, it's a bit of 
panzerism in there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the fact that I that for me there's consciousness all around us. So for me, it's important that you know everything stays happy. If I can put it that way, without getting controversial. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, we often like to dabble a bit in those type of things. You know, mm. you know, panpsychism, I believe, mm. is called. Yeah, the mm. idea that everything is conscious. Yeah, it's mm. certainly a very interesting topic. It is. And yeah, I mean, that's the topic to deal with consciousness. You know, the one thing that scientists cannot seem to understand. Mm. Everyone has their own theories and mm. so forth. I read. I read recently that the the idea of quantum tubules in the brain and how consciousness actually is sort of through warp time, like a black hole is put into the brain. So everybody is sharing the same conscious whole, but independently through the biological organism of life. It's insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, I, I, read, I read it the other... It's, it's some new th- thing they're busy with and some new study they're busy with, which I thought was... Yeah, it was a very interesting read. Right. And, you know, but... Um, yeah, I think consciousness is the big loof. It's everybody's trying to. What is it? Yeah. Where does it come from? Right. What's it all about? Yeah, I quite enjoyed. Uh, I think you read it as well. Was uh, Consciousness by Annika Harris? Mm. That was a fantastic book. Brilliant. Um, I think yeah, that's probably one of the best books you can read on the nature of consciousness. And I think she broke it down quite well. Um, best so that from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, panpsychism. Quite interested in quite interested what that has to say and yeah i'm very much leaning toward that side yeah when it comes to you know you know consciousness and yeah you know, yeah you know, what you believe when it comes to consciousness in, yeah mm. is it only possessed by humans is it you know do we only have a unique experience of consciousness is everything conscious i yeah. personally believe like you know obviously what pang Tuxum says you know f- um <laughs> consciousness is a fundamental part of matter it is in my opinion it is in my opinion too yeah so absolutely it is a fundamental part of matter. And there's some great experiments that people can look at, like the double split experiment and a couple of, you know, uh, subatomic particle experiments that have been done um, with regards to consciousness and, and, and quantum particles and so forth. So there's some, there's some cool stuff there. Yeah, so I'm looking at that, you know, every now and then, see what, what's sort of the latest <laughs> discovery. Right. Um, I think you should, you know. Yeah. People should be... People who ask the right questions live the right life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, not enough people are asking the right questions. We have too many people that just, okay, I'm just going to live, and that's it. Yeah. Go through my journey, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. like you say, you know, I think, like, you know, in, your, in your book, Are You, are you Awake? You know, like, like we often, but you often hear this a lot from, you know, um, intellectual conversations, people saying a lot of people are, you know, stuck in this zombie-like state. Oh, yeah. You know, they're not awake. Um, and, yeah, I mean... The most saddening thing to me is hearing people go, I can't wait for weekend. I'm like, what? What about tomorrow? No. Like, I spoke to someone about that the other day, and they just thought I was the weirdest person on earth. Yeah. And I was like, it's another day. It's another rotation around the sun. Like, every day is a Friday for me. Like, yeah. you know, like... Yeah, there's greatness in each day. Why yeah. aren't you seeing yeah. the value of your life? Yeah, I enjoy every day. Um, yeah. Oh, it's Monday tomorrow. <laughs> you know, like, cool. Change the way you view things. Yeah. You know, that's that's a problem. Because, I mean, you know, again... If you can't change what's around you and your environment, you need to change how you perceive your environment. Right. And that's fundamental. Yeah. No, because, I agree. Yeah. And we can do that. Yeah. And, and again, it comes back to something we spoke about in the previous um, podcast is you know once you start expanding your consciousness and you can then you can really start to optimize your life yeah people think these things are deeply disturbing the idea that we are here pondering consciousness and the meaning of life and all these things mm. it's like no it's greatly enhanced my life it's made me a better person more empathetic absolutely and, you, know, and, you know not to get too much into it but yeah I mean you know I love um, constantly asking these type of questions yeah i mean the things yeah the things you want want you to right do you know what i mean I love that. Yeah. yeah so when you do ask the questions and you want to live a better life because of these answers and that brain development you're going to be a better person right you have to self-optimize you have to question everything and you need to solve them for yourself mm. so that you can have a conversation with somebody else right about I mean, it 
Exactly. In this day and age, there's so much information out there. You know, you can, you have no excuse, you know, not to learn something new about the world. Mm. You know, I mean, in this day and age, you know, with all the podcasts and, you know, everyone, you know, being having access to the latest and greatest minds, you know, via social media and so forth. Mm. I mean, there's so much out there that you can just utilize to enhance your life. You know, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the other day I, um, I had the pleasure of talking to uh, a young individual, a young lady, who was struggling with um, some, some, some very serious panic issues. And she was afraid to fall asleep at night because she was afraid she wasn't going to wake up the next day. So her panic was really about, and of course, the less she slept, the worse it became. Of course. Um, she just had this massive fear for death, like this incredible fear that she was going to die wow. all the time. Like it was, it was incredible. And then she would, she would fixate and manifest and think about her death and it would just make this problem spiral out of control. And it's an incredible thing. And I think that, you know, so many people struggle with that, the, fe the fear of death. And I, I, I've been brought up um, in a home where we kind of welcomed death in a strange way. It was kind of like, well, this person has passed on. We're celebrating their life. Um, death is a noble thing because it makes way for more life. You know, it's a, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Right. We keep our children away from it. We keep people away from it because we don't want them to have what the fear of the fact that they're going to die. Right. Which is a fundamental part of life. <laughs> yeah. I see, f I see fear, I, I see death as a constant reminder to love every day of my life. I, I love that we're bringing this up because in my meditation practice that I've been doing recently, one thing that I'm, pon that I, one thought that I insert into my mind right before I do meditate is I think about my own mortality, the fact that I'm going to die. Yeah. And it just flips a switch in me. I become so motivated. Like, I'm like, I don't have enough, you know. Like it creates I'm, that urgency. Creates yeah. that sense of urgency, Man. and I love it. Yeah. Like, it just creates a sense of urgency that I have to live my best life. Yeah. And I have to live, you know, towards that every day. I have to, yeah. you know, like, I'll, when I do that, I'm like, can't wait to wake up at four and just get my day started. Yeah. And, you know, realizing that, you know, life is finite. It is, and you know, but that's what makes it great. Great, exactly. Like I don't, I don't. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what makes it unbelievable. Is like eventually, yeah. yeah, we gotta move on for for new life, Again. better life Again. in some case, some cases worse, but hopefully better life. You mm. know, but I mean, it does. It creates such an incredible urgency. If, if you look at it the right way, it's can, it can greatly enhance and benefit your life. Yeah, yeah. you have to ponder into these things. You have to ponder them. Yeah, if you don't. Yeah, what what are you thinking about if you're not thinking about these things? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like sometimes I, I don't want to sound, you know, like, you know, I'm better than anyone. But yeah, Worried I, about society. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, when I sit and I speak to people, I'm like, I'm like oh gosh, you know, like you're living such a subpar life, you know, the way you see things and view things. I'm like, mm. oh man. There's so if much I can just If I can just help you come. <laughs> yeah, open the box. Box a bit, you know. Just, just stick your head out there and yeah. see that but i realize this because i cannot have the conversations with other people than other than with yourself yeah you know because I, whenever i try to just at least you know dabble in these, some of these thoughts and ideas everyone's just like you know okay there's something yeah, yeah there's like, a psychological <laughs> like what's <laughs> the matter with you what's the matter and they kind yeah. of just like yeah they shut yeah. down you know and like would be family members or friends and so forth and yeah yeah that's why i just really you know love our friendship and i think that's why we, we grew so close over the yeah. years because you know definitely we're pre we you, see things yeah we see things the, the same, same way and, yeah. i mean yeah no i appreciate that i think you know um the world needs to awaken the world needs to consciousness must go up um people need to see that life is a beautiful and amazing thing you know, and that we can share this planet in a very, you know, um, happy and positive manner. Mm. You know, all of us, everyone as a collective, you yeah. know, um, 
we don't need to be segregated by cultural differences and you know we can really share um you know consciousness right if we're all thinking about the same things yeah we don't have enough people like the only so here's the thing the only thing that's better than science is better science and there's not enough people understanding science there's not enough people using science right in their daily lives why is that and I mean, it's not there's like there's a lack of smart people. It's just yeah. It's like you know, I think like Elon Musk famously said, a lot of smart people are just going into finance and law. No one's out there, you know, trying to change the world and do do greater things. Yeah, I mean, and like, and that's the big thing why he's actually doing what he's doing. It's like he just wants to kind of inspire and motivate, you know, the next generation of people to just, you know, like, gosh, you here, you alive. That's such an amazing like rare occurrence like you know yeah. here we are like you said the odds are very, very small. small yeah um you know just the idea that you know you're the universe pondering itself you know from a fundamental basis i mean yeah i, I just think you know that was a profound process for me to to accept was i used to think that i was a man experiencing the universe and and now i see i'm the universe experiencing this man when i read that for the first time i love that it's just, yeah, man, it's, it's just that inward thinking, you know, that, that higher conscious thought that comes in there and you're right. blown away by all of a sudden my life isn't what I thought it was. Yeah, and I can imagine just that realization that you came to, how much that affected your life, how much you do things. Yeah. I mean, you know, you're just a different person. Absolutely. I know when I had a similar experience like that, you know, it hit me hard and I was like, whoa. I did have an existential crisis to get a little bit personal. Yes. In, in a few years back, and I struggled a lot. You know, these things just started running through my mind, all these questions, what does it mean, what's it all about? Mm. And when I just started, to, you know, just like, okay, let me think these things through. You know, it is, I'm, I'm, it is happening and I'm going through it. And I just saw massive improvement in my life. Yeah. And, you know, obviously having, you know, you... There which I, which to, I have seen. I mean, you... you and you did it in such a raw way, which I love the most, because it's like somebody opened a puzzle box, just pieces everywhere. <laughs> it's literally like, how it happened. Yeah, what do I do? And and slowly you started piecing it together, together, you know, and then started, you know, understanding, re- have your version of reality and your version of consciousness. But you thought about it, so you had to put that piece together, which yeah. made sense to you. Right. And that heals people. That That heals people. So the word antidepressant, right? We're going to go a little bit there, just a tiny bit. <laughs> minute I say that, people go straight to SSRIs drugs. Right. This has to change because antidepressant can mean a better space in your life. It can mean a peaceful life. It can mean a whole host of other things that can contribute to a better life other than swallowing a pill. And that's the process you're going through. Right. Your antidepression or depressant tablet is not the tablet. It is the process of self-optimization and awareness and putting those puzzles together and figuring it all out. And now that you're getting there, you'll, the life change is phenomenal. I mean, I've seen you grow as a human being in the mm. last three to five years. It's phenomenal. Yeah. And, you know, eventually, yeah, you know, uh, uh, what's the thing you always say, you know, when you're depressed, you need that deep rest yeah and you know you need to just change the character change the character you know like you know I w- I'm no longer that Stephen that I what I was yeah and I'd accept that and I had to separate everything from that previous life yeah who I associated with I no longer associate with that person yeah and it sounds strange because it only feels like the other day yeah and it was tough for me psychologically of course. Through that. And people people don't see that because what they see is, oh, well, does that mean that person is a shallow person because they can just suddenly erase their past? Well, technically, no, you're, you've got a much more powerful mind if you can erase things and box them, pack them, and rebuild the character. Right. That's like an incredible, knowledgeable thing to do. You need to be on a different IQ level. The way you think has to be different to do that. Right. Um, otherwise you won't make it right no you won't I mean you won't make it it's a tough yeah. thing to go through and, and yeah um, yeah it's been interesting I know you had a similar experience as well oh yeah my my there was there was a lot of questions at some point 
um, I mean, I was at either there were times when I was, you know, questioning what I was drinking in water. You know, it's like I need something that's got more oxygen in it. <laughs> yeah, because this process, yeah, that we're talking about manifests as anxiety. It does. So, which, which in the modern day, everybody has. Right. It's, it's a new thing. I mean, it's people are suffering from anxiety, and like I said, lockdown just exposed that tremendously how much anxiety and depression is in the world you know they did a study i was reading this this morning i think with my wife i was telling her what they did was um and this is in the realm of of depression they did a study in china and they did a study in the u.s i can't remember what the study was called and in this study they wanted to provide a certain amount of people i think it was 300 people in china 300 people in the u.s with three hours in their day to find happiness. So do whatever you want to do in three hours to improve your happiness, to come out of depression, to, to make you feel happy, right? Right. And in the results were phenomenal in China because generally they are people who contribute without thinking to other people's lives to making them happy. The very people pleasing. Mm. So what they did was a lot of those people, when they took their three hours, were focused on making somebody else's life happier, which inadvertently made them happier. Right. So the results were dramatic. And when they came to the US, the results were terrible because more people were like, okay, now I've got time for me and I'm going to do what makes me happy. And then you realize the difference in culture, what result that had. That's, in, that's that's very interesting. It's wow. in, it sounds yeah, it was unbelievable. Um, we were re I was reading it this morning, and um, and it brings me back to the, what I always say to people. People always ask me, Brandon, how do I practice being happy every day? Mm. It's very simple. Picture the person, any person around you, without saying it out aloud. Truly wish for them to be happy. Just in your mind, just think about their happiness. Just wish for their happiness and a good life for these people. And I can tell you now, the effects on yourself are profound. And if you do that every day, you're gonna be a happier person. It, it's incredible. It, yeah. it becomes self-reflective. You, be, you start optimizing your own happiness by wishing other people happiness. Right. It's you know, um, amazing, yeah, I love that. It's a selfless thing. Yeah. And happiness you practice every day, you know. Mm. So. That, yeah, like they often talk about this pursuit of happiness. I mean, the pursuit of happiness. Yeah. It's like, that's nonsense. Like, you can yeah. have it every day. Of course. You Why know? are we, yeah. I mean, the pursuit. It's not of, the end product of your yeah, life. Yeah, it's not the end product <laughs> of a life. I mean, yeah. 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 So, yeah, I mean, the pursuit of happiness. I mean, you know, many movies or whatever that's been titled mm. that. And I just think it's nonsense. Absolutely. You know, like. Yeah. yeah. Pe people think, you know, once you achieve some level of financial freedom or success, you're going to be happy. This is definitely not the case. Just look at the data. Yeah. I mean. It's what I tell a lot of young kids. I go, yeah. you're young, you're 13, 14. You want to be successful because you think that's going to make you happy. Go and ask the most successful people you know, what are the pros and cons of being super successful? And then you'll quickly find out it's not what you think it is. Right. And they don't do that. I mean, and I, I've, I've, you, 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 like, as more information just gets put out in the world, you realize this. And I've seen it in my own anecdotal experience as well. I met a guy the other day, sold his company for 400 million. Wow. Sits at home, drink his life away. Yeah. It's super unhappy. Has everything he could have wanted. Yeah. And he's just like, I'm like, <laughs> okay. So that's clearly not the answer. <laughs> you know? Definitely. I'm so, I mean, you could have everything you want, you know, and you just, yeah, you're just deeply, deeply depressed. Yeah. And in a bad space, you know, and I, and alcoholic. I, yeah, definitely. I mean, I can totally agree with that. I think people don't realize until they have the financial wealth to have what they want, that actually they don't want it at the end of the day because it doesn't do anything for them. Right. Because you can have the nicest cars and the, the nicest toys, and they're really just trophies of your successful journey. Right. But they're nothing else. Right. They don't bring you personal happiness. 
And I mean, towards the end of their lives, I mean, guys like Einstein and, and Hawkins and Carl Sagan, Jobs, what do they all do? Yeah. The meaning of life, to make somebody else's life worth living. Yeah. You know, like, that's it. Mm. I mean. It's crazy. It's about making other people's lives better. Right. It's the only true satisfaction in the word success, in my opinion. No, I agree 100%, you know. And it's crazy how st people still just go along with you know, the route of, you know, I need more, I need more, and I need to achieve this yeah. and that. Yeah, it's just a fundamental flaw again. Definitely. You can have happiness and fulfillment every day. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. I mean, studies show, you know, people are no happier in now than what they were 100 years ago. Mm. Despite yeah. all the things that we have. Absolutely. It's made massive studies done on this. Yeah. People are no happier now than what they were 100 years ago. It yeah. just shows you. Gratitude. Yeah. Where is it? Yeah. Right. Why aren't we practicing it? Right. Every day. Mm. You know, yeah, the things we own end up owning us. It's true, you know, at the end mm. of the day. So gratitude, yeah. very yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to, we were like five minutes left. I, w I wanted to end with, um, you know, somebody asked me the other day, uh, what is a sure way, you know, to financially become successful? You know, what's the first step? Like, wh where do I start? Mm. And most guys will tell you, oh, you know, maybe invest here, bank there, do this, whatever have you. But I can honestly say, I, and I love this, because I found meaning in, in what, what I read. And when I started doing it, it made a massive difference in my life. The arigato, your money. It's like, when you give somebody money for something, you bless them. You know, like, and I say it out loud. If I buy something for like a hundred rand at a petrol station, I go, be blessed with this money. Love it. And I cannot, you, I cannot tell you, it's like it keeps the wealth close to you. It keeps, it keeps, it keeps you in this, this, if I can say universe where your money's never gone too far away from you because you're blessing somebody with it and you're going to get blessed in return. Right. Do you know what I mean? I love that. Yeah. And yeah, I, somebody summed it up and I can't remember the, the Japanese individual that did, but he, he, he had a good name and he called it Arigato, your money. You know, just, yeah, it's like you paying somebody but you're sort of thanking them and you're blessing them. Um, and I found that if I, if I bless people with money all the time, even if I'm saying it in my mind, it's a massive difference. Yeah. That's a great way to start. That's fantastic. If you're going to start anywhere as a young entrepreneur, start there. Right. Because that empathy. Yeah. When you have empathy as an entrepreneur, you're going to be great. Right. And again, not to say that, they, you know, they, the studies show that they can accurately predict your um, income based on your EQ. Yeah. Way more accurately than they can base your income based on your IQ. I have read that. Yes. So the most successful people are generally your most empathetic. Yeah, which is amazing. It's amazing. They could calculate it to the T. It, it blew my mind when I saw this research. Mm. IQ that some very high IQ, low income, no correlation. EQ, yeah. perfect correlation. Could, Unbelievable. They could calculate it to the T. But, you know, now that you were saying, you know, speaking to youngsters and so forth, I'm obviously a youngster and... You know, I look up to you a lot in various ways. And there's obviously one question I think that I'd like to ask you, maybe in closing off. Yeah. I just want to know, I'm a what, 23 year old. You know, if you could, if I could create a portal next to you and you could just stick your head through it and speak to 20 year old Brandon, what advice yeah. would you give him? What's one thing you would say to him? That's a great question. Hmm. I think. If I had a portal and I could really tell myself, give myself some great advice, would be just stop living in fear. You know, fear of, you know, the unknown, fear of the risks I could have taken when I was younger to become more successful at a young age. I love that. Yeah, I was, I think that was my biggest thing that held me back was I was 
in fear of a lot of things when it came to success. You know, if I do this, am I going to lose everything? If I make this decision, what's going to happen? You know, I would always preempt the worst possible outcome, you know, and then work back from that. Right. That was the hardest thing I had to overcome. Right. I'd go fetch the monkey behind the mountain even before I've gone, you know, like I predicted the worst outcome. And if I could tell myself, look back and go, hey, it's time for you to, to not predict the worst outcome, but start predicting the best outcome. I think I would be, would have been much more successful sooner in sooner. my life. Yeah, that's the big thing. Predict a better future faster. Yeah, exactly. And get up faster and get going. Uh, that's what I thought you were going to say. The yeah. idea that, you know, you wish you started sooner. Yeah. You know? And, I, and, I, and that's the thing for, for a lot of the young guys out there. Keep predicting the best outcome and work towards it. Love that. Awesome. awesome. Good stuff. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah. What a what pleasure. Thank what you. A pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for being on board. Love it. Thanks very much.